And so begins the march of the carve addict in his natural habitat. What's up, sugar junkies? Welcome to day eight of my sugar sobriety. As you can see from my walk down the dreaded pathway to the scale, I'm down to 245 pounds, which is still a massive amount, a massive amount. I got a long way to go, but I am happy to report I've lost nine pounds in my first week. Well, that first week will be a little bit misleading because you're going to lose water weight. But the reason this is a great thing is because in your first week, you're also probably your weakest. That's the way it works for me. So in that first week, you want everything you can to motivate yourself. And when you see nine pounds off on the scale, it is a great way to get started. It gives you that momentum that you need to keep going. Right now, I feel fantastic right now. But I will say this first week has been very, very difficult. Evenings are killer. Like trying to shake that those cravings at night are very, very hard. Um, I promise I'm always going to tell you what you need to hear, not what you want to hear. I can say comforting things like, hey, it's going to be easy. You got, you know, but there is, there's a lot of difficulty in these first few weeks. If you want to do this, if you really want to shake this thing, it's difficult. So please remember that it's going to be hard. The best things in life are usually, they take the most effort and they're the most difficult, but you can get through this. If I can do this, anybody can, honestly. My carb addiction is, is as strong as it can get. And there's a certain point where I get to and I'm, I just know that I have to deal with it. It's just, it affects every aspect of my life. So you have to motivate yourself. This is the part that's on you. You've got to find a way to motivate yourself to just cut them out for three, four weeks. If you can do that, I promise you, then it gets easier. But this first month is hard and I, you know, the people around me could attest to it. I'm sure that the people in my household think I'm very grumpy right now, but that will go away. And, you know, like hopefully my family won't go away in the meantime, but you stick with it and you just get through it and those withdrawals start to go away and you'll feel, you will feel great. I already am feeling better in a lot of ways. First, I'll go through my withdrawal symptoms so you know exactly what I'm dealing with. And maybe you can tell me what you're dealing with in the comments below. Before I continue, please hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, ring that bell. All that stuff makes it easier for me to bring you more quality content. And, you know, I want to hear comments. I want to get to know, you know, what you're dealing with, what day you're on in your sugar sobriety. Get on the bus with me. Uh, this is something I don't want to do alone. I want to do this together. It, you don't probably don't want to do it alone either. I'm here, you're here. There's lots of other people who are in the same boat as you. When I talked about fishing food out of the garbage last time, which for me is one of the hardest things to talk about because it's very embarrassing, I found out there's a lot of other people who deal with the same thing. And, you know, so I think it's very important for you to realize you're not alone in this and you don't have to be alone. Let's do this together. This bus, you know, like you can always get on. It doesn't matter if you're on day one, day 365 or year five. Get on it and try to stay on it as long as you can. And if you fall off, get back on. That's it. Anyways, back on topic. Let's get, get into withdrawal symptoms. My withdrawal symptoms, there's a few real bad ones. The first, the worst for me are migraines. I am a sufferer of migraines. They're not that common. They've been more common in recent years, possibly due to weight gain. I don't know. But cutting, the, cutting out my carbs like the next day, day one of being carb-free, raging migraine. It was really bad. Day two, bad migraine. Day three, nothing. Day four, day six, I think I had migraines. Like I've had a lot. I can't say they've gone away yet. I don't have one today. I feel fantastic today. It's video day. I always feel good on video day. Uh, but so far, so good. But I think I might have gotten through the worst of those. 
I guess there's only one other bad symptom for me. My other really bad symptom has been restlessness at night and difficulty trying to get to sleep. Uh, normally, I, I sleep like a log. As soon as my head hits the pillow, I'm out in like 10 minutes easily. Like I'm a great sleeper and I'm still a great sleeper. That hasn't changed. So like my, in fact, I would argue that my, my, my sleeping has gotten even better. My sleeping is so sound and I feel fantastic in the morning. When you go to bed on an empty stomach, it's in the beginning, it feels horrible. You're like, what am I doing? I'm torturing myself. But when you wake up the next day, you feel great. You know why? Because your body, you know, when you go to sleep, your body is supposed to be in shutdown and repair mode. You know, you slow down, everything goes down to, you know, minimum, your heart slows down, everything slows down and you're supposed to just recuperate, recharge the battery. When you stuff food in your gullet right before you go to sleep, your body now has to process that food. So instead of getting a nice sound sleep, your body's doing work. So, you know, no wonder being obese and eating badly and stuffing yourself full of carbohydrates your whole life, of course it shortens your life because your body is doing it's working double time, basically. It doesn't get any time off. My nights now, the first hour I toss and turn and I'm just, you know, I guess I'm counting, I'm counting donuts hopping over a fence, the way people count sheep. Eventually I get to sleep and I'm fine. But, it, you know, so far my sleep's been difficult. I'll let you know when it starts to get back to normal. But, but that being said, my sleep has still been great and I feel better already. That is the best thing about this. So those are my only withdrawals. Uh, everyone's different. I, you're not going to have the same withdrawals as me. I'm not going to have the same withdrawals as you. I would love to hear people's symptoms. Like, please leave them below in the comments because, you know, there's a lot to this and it's not a simple thing. It's very complex and everyone's a little bit different. So, you know, improvements, what has gotten better for me over the past week? Very quickly, I had, you know, I could exert myself in the slightest way and I could feel my heart pounding. I know that's a horrible thing to say. And you're going to say like, go to a doctor immediately. But, but I could just feel that my blood pressure is up. That's the best way to describe it. And as soon, like uh, after day two, that feels like it goes away. Like I would be willing to bet that my blood pressure is lower. I'm just speculating by the way. Um, but I feel much better in that regard. My breathing is still terrible, but I'm carting around a lot of weight and I do have, I am an asthmatic. So, you know, it could be coincidence that my breathing got worse in the last year since I packed the weight on. Uh, but I have a feeling it's not. We'll see. Other than that, uh, I just, I can't say my mood is better yet. Sometimes it is. Like I wake up feeling great, but throughout the day, especially evening, I'm a little bit grumpy because I can't get that, you know, I can't get my, uh, the crack in my system, I guess. Um, but I'm getting there and I think that will improve over the next couple of weeks. So, you know, that's really it. I think everything else is going pretty well. As far as cravings, how do we deal with them? Because, you know, this first few weeks, it's going to be hard. You're going to be tempted. That temptation is always there. You watch something on TV, there's a commercial, they, they advertise fast food, they ad advertise sweets, whatever. It's constantly in your face. It's everywhere. You could go out with someone. I mean, not so much during the pandemic. That's, I guess that's a, a good thing. You're not out at restaurants and things like that. But, you know, you just have to be constantly vigilant. And in the evenings, you know, what can you do to, to stop these cravings? Honestly, you can't stop them. Time will stop them. Your body will adjust. But that adjustment period, there's no nice way to put it. It sucks. So, you know, lots of water. Okay, drink as much water as you can. You can add caffeine. I'm not a huge advocate of diet pop. Like really, like diet soda has its own problems. But I mean, you know, get your caffeine where you need to get it as long as there's no sugar for now. Uh, you know, if you have to use diet soda or like a, you know, diet energy drink or something, I wouldn't suggest that before bed because you'll never sleep. Uh, but it, it's something it'll, you know, it'll help curb your appetite a little bit. You just want to do everything you can. You need every weapon in your arsenal right now. It will get easier and you can you can let go of some of that other stuff later. Uh, if you can do that, the other thing I would suggest, I don't know if you're a late night person or not, but if you are a late night person, force yourself to pick a bedtime and go to sleep. The later you stay up, the longer you're fighting those carb cravings. Who do you think it's going to be easier for? Will it be easier for me if I go to bed at 10 o'clock at night, which means I ate at 5 
I don't eat past then or six, we'll say, but I go to sleep. I have four hours between, or five, let's say five hours between when I eat at five and I go to bed at 10. That's a five hour battle that I'm fighting, okay? Say you go to bed at two o'clock or one o'clock, let's say one o'clock in the morning. Well, now you're fighting an eight hour battle, right? Did I do my math right? Yeah. <laughs> um, but you're fighting an eight hour battle. Who do you think it's gonna be easier for and who's gonna have a more difficult time? Plus it's the final three hours. Those first five are easier. Now you're three more hours removed from the last time you ate and you have more time to think and get up in your head. I know how I am and, and rationalize some reason for, for eating some kind of sugary thing or some junk food or whatever. So, you know, an, try to set yourself a nice bedtime. It doesn't have to be 10 o'clock, but, but something reasonable where you are going to not be up thinking about this thing. You don't have to stick to it forever, but it is healthier. And the more sleep you get, the better your body is and the better shape your body is for fighting this. Like give yourself every weapon that you can to fight it. That's all I can say. Other than that, motivate yourself. Think about what you want to get to. Think about where you want to get to, how you want to look, how you want to feel, how you want your relationships to be. You think about these things, you can have all the good things that you want in this life, but you got to work at it and you're worth it. And you can do it. And that's all I can say. But you got to remember that. Don't get down on yourself. If you fall off the wagon, uh, I spoke with someone on Reddit who said that they fell off the wagon after three days. But, you know, there's an easy answer for that. Get back on the bus. It's fine. And remember this. Don't fall into the trap of this day is ruined. I can't, I can't fix things. Get back up and say, okay, I ruined half the day, but I still have half the day to do great. If you say this day is over with, then you're going to pack on another pound or a half pound. Like you're going to eat terribly that night. You're going to feel terrible tomorrow. And then you're going to have a harder time tomorrow getting back on. So so start right now. The, if I can give you any advice, if you listen to anything that I say or that I know, I know this. The best time to start is right now. There's nothing stopping you except for you. Uh, you know, there's nothing that can stop you from getting to where you want to go. It's a, we're all own, our own worst enemies. Like that's a common phrase and it's so true. So, you know, together we're going to get there. Uh, tell me what day you're on. This is day eight officially for me. So it's been just a week. Uh, you saw my, my measurement. I will do that once a week. Please don't sock shame me. That would be hurtful. And uh, that's it. I think that's it for today. So please like, subscribe, hit the bell. And next time we are going to talk, I'll probably give you a midweek talk. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, temptations and how to deal with them, you know, in, in real life, family, friends, people who, you know, don't really get what we're going through. But, you know, we're going to have to deal with these situations, whether we want to. Okay, until next time, sugar junkies.